I don't need that test coverage. I know that I'm the single point of failure. Keep it simple. It's not that deep. We are essentially trying to create the best job interview prepping tool for literally any job out there in the world. Welcome back, y'all. What's good? Welcome to another episode of Building an App from Scratch, episode number six. And today I am so pumped up to build this brand new feature that I've been cooking up in the old noggin for the past couple of days because I think this is going to be a game changer. Now, just for a little bit of context for those of you that are new to this whole channel, new to this whole series, I'm essentially documenting my process building an app from scratch. I'm building an app called perfectinterview.ai. It is an AI powered job interviewing tool. It is a tool to help you land your dream job by helping you prepare for whatever job interview that you may have coming up. We're slowly shifting our focus and wanting to build out more features to help anybody in the world for any job get the best job interview prep, interview practice that they possibly can all with the help of AI. Now, let me show you what I exactly I mean by that. What I mean by that is the fact that jobs like software engineering and investment banking, that is such a streamlined process because there are resources with hundreds and thousands of questions, job prep materials, interview prep materials, all of that. But that doesn't exist for the vast majority of jobs out there in the world. So now with the power of AI, I think that what we can now do is a user will be able to enter in the job title, the job description, and then maybe also the company name and the company description enter that into an AI model, our AI model that we're gonna train ourselves. And then with the power of AI, we can generate unlimited number of practice interview questions to help anyone applying for a job, cover every single nook and cranny, cover every single question that they might possibly get asked and practice the answer for. So now they no longer have to walk into an interview completely unprepared being like, I don't know what kind of questions I'm gonna get asked. Like they're gonna have hundreds of questions of practice underneath their belt. So we are essentially trying to create the best job interview prepping tool for literally any job out there in the world. Let's list out the main features that we have to have in this app before we are able to launch it out into the public. But by the time you're watching this video, this feature has probably already been released out to the public. So you can try it out at perfectinterview.ai, check it out. So number one, we're gonna have to be able to take in the input of a job title, job description, company name, company description, and generate custom interview questions for them. That's an absolutely killer feature that will help anybody prepare for their jobs much more effectively. The second thing that we're gonna add is we need to add the ability for users to get feedback on their answers because it's one thing just to get like a question that they can practice answering on but they kind of also have to know how good their interview answers are so that's gonna be number two and number three we already have this feature in our product right now for the investment banking interviews as well as the software engineering interviews so it's not gonna be too technical of a lift but we also want to allow users to have mock interviews where they can actually have a very realistic chatting experience where we record their entire video during the interview and the AI model talks to them and they respond to the question themselves by just recording a video. And then we will then store that video recording, transcribe that video recording, generate all this good interview feedback so that they can have a more realistic interview experience. So those are the three main features that we're gonna have to do. Let's get into building out the very first part of this feature, building out a pipeline to create unlimited custom interview questions by a user inputting a job, job description, company name, company description. And we're gonna first start off by reading a lot of open AI documentation and honestly just prompt engineering documentation right now. I know it sounds like a meme that I'm saying that, but legitimately there is a skill to prompt engineering. Like there are levels to how good or how bad you may be. And honestly, I'm a pretty bad prompt engineer. So I'm gonna read through a ton of documentation just to figure out what's the best way to do this. So I'm gonna take um, maybe an hour reading through a couple of pages, uh, various websites to figure out some of the best strategies for prompt engineering so that we can generate the best questions out there for any type of job out there in the world. All right, we are back after reading some documentation for a couple of hours and super helpful, actually. When this whole chat at GPT stuff came out, like in the beginning, people meme the idea of prompt engineers and be like, software engineers are gonna turn to prompt engineers. Oh, I'm a senior prompt engineer. But like, I legitimately think that there's a skill. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it actually doesn't affect the model all that much, but I will do whatever it takes to make sure that our users get the best possible experience out there. So I spent some time reading some prompt engineering and it was really useful. I literally just read all of OpenAI's documentation, went into some weird Reddit rabbit holes of good prompt engineering practice. And while reading through OpenAI's documentation, I was reminded of this one feature that they announced that OpenAI demo day, you know, like the whole demo day before Sam Altman got fired, then rehired, 
then this whole drama within OpenAI happened. But I remember they talked about JSON mode in OpenAI, essentially forcing the OpenAI model to always output a JSON structure, which is going to be incredibly helpful for developing my apps because for those of you that don't have a software engineering or coding background, it essentially forces the data to be returned in a very specific format every single time, making it much less prone to errors on my end. So I'm really excited to see the JSON format live and ready to go. Now we're gonna actually have to design and implement the whole job flow process of how exactly we are going to store and generate these custom jobs and custom job interviews, custom job questions. Let me make up a couple of diagrams and let me show you the final results of what exactly we are going to build. What's up nerds? Let's walk through this diagram of how exactly the custom job generator, custom job question generator feature is gonna work out in perfectinterview.ai. So this is gonna be so right here, this is just a super bare bones UI. Honestly, really nothing sexy. It's just gonna be a bunch of text inputs and then a button at the bottom to create job. You enter in your job title, you enter in your job description, company title, company description. And then from there, when you press create job, we then hit our create job question service. And this is where a lot of that prompt engineering that I just read up on, this is where it's all gonna go down. I essentially created this giant prompt that says, like you are going to receive four inputs, job title, description, company name, company description, from here, generate a bunch of interview questions related to this job and output every single result as a JSON with the field of question as well as correctness criteria. And the reason why we also wanna have this correctness criteria generated is because we also wanna have something to grade the user's answers to provide them with feedback with how good or how bad their answer is. So it's gonna output an array of JSON objects with a question and correctness criteria. We store the job title, the job description, the company name, the company description here, and then we have a one to many related relationship from the description to the questions because one job description is going to have many, many questions. I think right now we're only generating like 20 practice questions. Later on, I do want to add a follow-up feature, probably not in this video, but like later, later on to generate like unlimited questions in the future. And then from that array of JSON objects of question text plus correctness criteria, we are then adding all of those questions into the question table here, which has, which has a foreign key relation to a custom job description ID here. And honestly, it's way simpler than I really thought that this is gonna be like. What I realized while trying to build product both for myself as well as for at a bigger company, oftentimes a lot of the most impactful features are not always gonna be the most technically complex ones. I think a lot of engineers get really hung up on the fact like we are going to have to build the most complex feature in the world to have the most impact. But I actually think that there is like a very much so inverse relationship a lot of times where some of the highest impact work is also the least complex and some of the lowest impact work can also be the most complex as well. That's definitely not a golden rule, like a blanket statement I'm trying to say for everything out there, but I have been noticing a trend just in life. It's like, man, Keep it simple. It's not that deep. Remember, it's not that deep. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Time for me to actually go out and build this feature. <laughs> you thought I was gonna do one of those fake work montages. Eh, I see you, I see you. Nah, just kidding. I'm actually gonna do some work and do a little bit of filming just to get some B-roll, but gonna start building this. See you in a bit. What's up, nerds? Welcome back. I just finished wrapping up the first iteration of this whole custom job interview creation flow. I completed this whole diagram where I built out the UI, created this custom job service, these new tables and stored all the data from this create job question output service into these two tables. So let me walk you through just exactly how that all works. So we go here, bang, snazzy little create new custom job button. Let's click on that bad boy. It's gonna take us to this screen. Nothing crazy here, just a bunch of text inputs up, job title, description, company name, company description. And I found this random job listing for program manager at the mom project to show you just exactly how it all works. So we'll paste the job description We'll paste the job title, company name, and then did it have a company description? All right, I think this is this is the company description right here. Add the company description, and then we'll press on create job. And as you can see here, has this nice little generating your interview questions. This can take up to a few minutes. Please be patient with us. So the process just finished running. We just ran a quick database query to select all from custom job descriptions. And as you can see, this is the job description. This is the company description that we just entered in. And now let's take a look at the actual questions that we generated as well. 
whoops, wrong table name. All right, here we go. So these are some of the questions and the correctness criteria that we generated. Oh, as you can see, there are tons and tons of questions that we generated. So what role does mentorship play in your leadership style as a program manager? How do you mentor team members effectively? I don't know. But as you can see, it has a correctness criteria uh, created for it. And just reading it sounds pretty good. And now you can start seeing the power that this feature has. Now this person that's interviewing for this job title at the mom project as a program manager, they have these custom built interview questions specifically for that job. And you can just create limitless, endless amounts of questions that they can then practice on, get the best interview prep that they can possibly get so that once they go in and it's time to actually interview, they're ready to go. They got everything figured out. They had their answers honed to a T. Now that we got actual like the question generation done here, we now have to wrap this all up into a prettier UI, which actually is not going to be too mentally taxing because we actually have a lot of these UI components built into the product itself. We just have to basically duplicate them and adapt them to fit these custom job interview questions that we generate. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. For those of you that have been following along in the series, you know that we have this investment banking interview product. Still TBD, if we're gonna keep it or not, we might get rid of it, we might sunset it, but we're gonna be able to use a lot of the existing components that we built for the investment banking interview for the custom job interviews that we're generating as well. And what I mean by that is, like I mentioned earlier, we had generated all of these questions and we're gonna have two ways to present these questions to the users. One of them is kind of like a gigantic question bank where they can just answer the questions endlessly, get feedback on the questions as well. And this is what that feature looks like here. So when you click on the investment banking technical questions, we have this huge list of questions. So for a question like this, you can write out an answer and we actually generate feedback for your answer as well. So let me try answering this question. So essentially with all the custom interview questions that we generated, we have to wrap them in this UI as well so that the users can go in, answer all the questions that they want. We already have these components built in. We just have to add support for it for the new custom job interview questions that we generated as well. And then the second thing that we're gonna have to do is also generate is also to create the ability for users to do mock interviews with the questions that we generated. This is the mock interview user experience. You just start the interview Can you break and down the form? you go How through, does answer these questions. So then as the user goes through the mock interview, at the end, they can also review their interview performance, get feedback on their interview performance, as well as play back the whole video recording of their interview. So really, we already have the building blocks of all the UI components built out. We just have to present it in a pretty way. So honestly, I don't think this is gonna be a lot of work because we already spent many hours in the past, many days in the past, already building out these components for the investment banking interview experience. Can't wait to get this feature wrapped up and let the real users of the world try it out and just experience it for themselves. I know that through building this product, there have been multiple times where I mentioned, oh, I just built this feature in a day. Oh, this only took me a couple of hours. And a lot of people are like, bro, how is that physically possible? I've been trying to build my own product for the past two and a half years. And I've also been largely failing, like all my products have basically failed. But a side effect of building out a lot of these failed applications over these past two and a half years is the fact that I have tons a reusable code that I can just copy and paste whenever I need it, which makes my development process way faster. Basically, you think of any component, any feature that you need to build for a new app, most likely I have that built somewhere in many of my failed apps from the past. And number two, if you're somebody that works in big tech and you're like, dude, how do you ship features so fast? I'm here to tell you that I definitely do not code with the same level of like quality or excellence that I do in my solo projects that I do at coding in my day job. Because look, I'm the only engineer. I don't write any tests. I repeat code constantly, but at least for now, I think that's okay because my number one priority, which I've said many times in this whole video series, is just building product really fast. I don't need that test coverage. I know that I'm the single point of failure and at least for now, I'm okay with that because I don't have a team. I'm literally the only engineer building out this whole thing. I can only build these features so quickly because I have tons of reusable code from my past projects as well as the fact that I decreased my code quality to ship out code this fast. All right, so I actually finished up the entire feature by the end of the day. I did not expect that to happen. I thought it was gonna be a much more intense multi-day process but we love building a lot of reusable code that I can reuse for a lot of different features in the future so that definitely helped expedite the process. I hope you're enjoying this process of me documenting my whole product building journey. If you are enjoying it definitely hit the subscribe button. Tons of more episodes to come so definitely check it out. But as always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.